be driven by it somehow. We missed it. We didn't miss it. The numbers go from 918 and 934. You should have called, huh? What would you have said if you'd called? If I got a better offer? Forget it. That call doesn't work for me. Why are you carrying a moose around in the back of your car? Because it won't fit in the trunk. As a good friend like a smile. You can always use a smile. The problem is, there never seems to be enough smiles or good friends to go around, especially when you're playing five-card draw. Tennis ball, it's no big deal. Oh, no, I, I mean that skateboard stuff. It's, is that hard to learn? No. You probably pick it up real easy. You're a pretty good athlete. It's tennis balls over the fence. Well, you had some pretty good looking distractions there. Does that mean you a lot? I think girls watching me. Well, a little bit, I guess. Is it hard to learn tennis? Oh, no. You'd probably pick it up real quick. Maybe we can work something out here. You teach me that stuff, and I'll teach you this stuff. William, help me get these balls off the court so we can volley, okay? I'll be right there, Dad. I gotta go. There's a court open at 3. Would that be okay? Um, what's your name? David Witherspoon. What's yours? I'm William Jordan. William? People call you William? Well, sometimes Bill. How about Willie? Skateboard Willie. Skateboard Willie. Yeah, I like it. We'll see you at three. Okay. You don't mind, do you, if Debbie and Sherry join us for lunch? Well, I thought we were going to lunch. Just the... Hey, Candy Face, how are those cookie sales going? I just sold my first two boxes. Good girl. Yeah, Bruce has already sold 20. Bertha. <sighs> Well, hi, guys. Hi, hi Jesse. <laughs> so, do you mind about Debbie and Sherry? Because, see, we want to go shopping afterwards since the restaurant's right near the mall. No, I don't mind at all. As long as you tell me which boys you're talking about. Sure. We can do that for you, Mom. But I just hate getting them all mixed up. <laughs> all right, then I'm going to call Debbie and tell her that you'll be joining us. <laughs> oh, great. Now I'm joining them. How did I get so lucky? Uh, being the mother. Yeah. I guess you're right. How's the game going? It hasn't started yet. How come? Well, I figure Joe and Lou must have made a bad turn, got lost along the way. Maybe that's them. I'll go see. Thanks, Pumpkin. I hope they picked up some more cheese sticks. We're almost out. Jesse, are you any good at zippers? I'm great at zippers, sure. What do you need? This here. Oh, 
Huh? Jesse. Yeah. Lefkowitz just died. Gus, come in here, please. Hurry. Oh, Mr. Kappa. Uh. Joe, where you been for heck's sake? We've been in there shuffling cards for an hour. Gus. Did you bring any cheese sticks? Where's Lefkowitz? He died. What? He died. It was at the benefit. We were doing the horse thing. He was the hind end of the horse. And we got to the part about the dance. He died dancing? Yeah, the hokey pokey. You mean where you, you put your left foot in? And yeah, you... yeah, right. Joe, put your left foot in and you move it all around. Joe, sit down. That sit part down. there. And, 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 uh, then we got to the hokey pokey part. And, uh, Lou. Lou bought the farm. I didn't know what was going on at first because I was having such a good time, you know. And then we got to the, you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around, that part. And I was turning myself in knots around Lefkowitz and that's how the zipper got all messed up. I can't get this thing off. And then something awful happened. Some of the kids in the audience, they, they thought it was part of the act and they started to applaud. Hey, what? Yeah, we got a standing ovation. Louie would have liked that. Mom, I called Debbie and, and she said... What's the matter? Well, honey, Mr. Kaplan and Mr. Lefkowitz... I think Mr. Kaplan better tell you. Well, Chris, the truth of the matter is Lefkowitz was a horse's behind tonight. Now he's dead. You got a minute? Sure. I got a minute. I think I owe you an apology. Okay. Well, maybe what I mean is I think I owe Mr. Lefkowitz an apology. Honey, that's going to be a tough one to deliver. Yes, I hope you know that I would never do anything. Um, like... make fun of Mr. Lefkowitz dying. Thanks, Pumpkin. Could you clean this up for me? Oh, sure, yes, I... yes. Hokey pokey. <laughs> Joe, get a cup of coffee. We got time. I don't think so, Gus. We got to pick up Martin and Crimshaw. Okay. I better make a move. Oh, you're looking sharp, Gus. I haven't seen you in a set of threads like this in a long time. Well, and the next time, somebody else will be dead. You ever been in a synagogue before, Gus? I don't think so. You're supposed to wear a hat. You got a hat? Or you could wear a yarmulke. You mean one of those little, <laughs> little beanies? Right, right. I don't have one of them. Well, I, I have an extra one here for you. Sure, what's the matter with my hat? Nothing's the matter with your hat. It's perfectly acceptable. It's just that a yarmulke is more traditional, that's all. Okay. The man's dead. I guess we can show him that much respect. Lead the way, sir. That was a real nice service. Sure. Yeah, I can't figure out who that guy was talking about. It wasn't the left for which I knew. I didn't know he was that religious. 
The only time left who would spend Saturday in the temple is when the fish weren't biting. And if you go by his base stories, they were always biting. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Witherspoon? That's my name. What can I do for you? I'm Howard Lefkowitz, Louie's nephew. Oh, uh, glad he to meet a family show. resemblance. Pleasure. My uncle left a letter in a safe deposit box, and it has your address on it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure going to miss old Louie. I know we all will. Well, thanks for passing this on. Well, he was lucky to have such good friends. I think that's why he, he knew he could count on you all. Count on us for what, sir? I think he explains it in a letter, but I assume that it has something to do with that crate. It's fishing gear. No, I got that. How about that easy chair of his that you always liked? I'm sorry, yeah, I got that. He had a real spiffy bowling ball. I thought I would take up the sport. Judging from the reading on the rector scale, I would say Prince Charming. Better. Gary Kublik. I never have the names like Lancelot and Galahad. Mom, Gary is our star quarterback. He single-handedly won our last two games and the playoffs. You know, when I was a girl, we used to have boys slay dragons for us. What do you think of this dress? This is unbelievably, totally incredible. You're right. I don't like it either. Get rid of it. Mom, you didn't hear a thing I said. Well, of course I did, sweetie. Now, when is this unbelievably, totally incredible event about to happen? Saturday afternoon. We're going to go horseback riding and then to a barbecue. Saturday? That means we can't go shopping together on Saturday. Oh, Mom, I forgot. Look, I'm sorry. But this date with Gary is probably the biggest thing that's happened to me this century. We can go shopping another time. Right. Wouldn't want to spoil your century. Thanks, Mom. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Oh, I'm so excited I can scream. I think it's only fitting that we come together where we have so often gathered to have a little fun and chew the fat. When are we going to open the crate? Well, I think first we ought to say a little something about Lou Lefkowitz, each of us. Oh, you say the words for us, Gus. We'll save time that way. OK. I can't be as flowery as the rabbi, but uh, one thing is clear. We knew Lou Lefkowitz, and the rabbi didn't. We knew his faults. <laughs> mm -hmm. The man could not play poker. And try to get him to shut up. He picked his teeth. That always bugged me. Mm -hmm. At least he kept his teeth in his mouth. Not my fault he got a better fit. <laughs> oh. Continue, Gus. Go ahead. Well, I... That about tears it. What else do you say except, uh, Lou Lefkowitz, we loved you, we're gonna miss you, and we'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Cheers. I'll drink here, that. Here, here. Okay. Let's open a crate. Uh, 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 uh. Don't you guys want to know what's in this letter? What? Mm -hmm. Well, here, read it. Yeah. Me? You? I've already read it. You guys are mentioning it, you know. Dear Gus, if you're reading this now, I'm dead. <laughs> Hope that doesn't come as a surprise to you. I didn't know about it either. I only hope my death was quick, painless, and not ridiculous. A standing ovation, that's not bad. I'm going to miss you and the guys and our poker nights. If you're playing now, bet all my chips. What the heck? You only live once. That's a little afterlife humor. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> anyway, the reason I wrote you this letter, Gus, is I have a favor to ask. You probably received the crate and are wondering what's inside. Well, let me tell you a little about Lila. First. Lila? Who's Lila? I don't know. Wait. 
Lila was my first love. We were in Green Meadow, Montana when I was a teenager, and I'll never forget one balmy night in a wide open meadow with no one around except Lila, me, and one wide-eyed onlooker. Jeez, <laughs> believe this. What's in the crate has come to symbolize Lila's and my love. I've kept it all these years, but now I think Lila should have it. She's married now. Her name is Lila Delacorte. Mm. I'm asking you and the guys to deliver it to her. Until we meet again, love you, Lou. And this Lila Delacorte and her address. Mm. <sighs> well, let's have a look. Well, a moose? A wide-eyed onlooker. That Lila must be some kind of woman. Looks like we're on a mission for Lefkowitz. Okay, now, which one of you girls wants to give her cookie report first? Okay, Diane, you can go. I sold 30 boxes of cookies, and I've got orders for 20 more. Very good, Diane. Isn't that good, girl? That isn't so good. I sold 62 boxes. Very good, Diane. Carolyn, you're next. I've had a very good cookie season. I've sold 53 boxes and have orders for 40 more. <gasps> I don't think Carolyn plays fair. She sells all her cookies to her four brothers. I think I want to leave now. Molly, would you like to give your cookie report? Well, so far I've sold five boxes. But that's only because I want my customers to have fresh cookies. That's why I have orders for 150 boxes of fresh cookies. Oh, oh my God! Good for you, Molly. Good for 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 Molly. We didn't miss it. The numbers go from 918 to 934. That's because there is no 928. Not anymore, anyways. Right. So what do you want to do, Gus? You're driving. I give up. Well, we tried, Gus. I don't know what more we can do. I don't think we can do anything more. You think Dave will want this thing in his room? Well. I would if I was a kid. But if he doesn't, we'll take it down to the lodge and sell it in the rummage sale. Maybe the old thing will bring a few bucks. There you go. Oh, Winkle, oh, boy. Louis Lefkowitz and Lila Delacorte. I don't know. Those, those names don't seem to fit. They did one day, my friend. They did one day. Well, I got to get home because uh, they, uh, they announced the lottery winners tonight. And Gladys and I always watch together. Uh, she gets all excited about it, you know? You're wasting your time and your money, my friend. You're never going to win one of those things. Gus, anything that Gladys gets excited about has got my vote. You know what I mean? 
Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. steeple in there. Good try, baby. That's real good, though. Good job. Puzzles, huh? You'll be working on that for a hundred years. You want to help us? No. I don't. I just be in the way. I thought you were going to the movies with your daughter. I think she got a better offer. Huh. Hey guys, how was your party at the uh, tennis club? It was great. How did the old racket work out? Not nearly as good as the new one my friend loaned me. Oh, he has more than one, does he? Yeah. He gets this big discount from the pro shop because he plays in tournaments all the time. Generous. Well, I'm giving him skateboarding lessons and he's giving me tennis lessons. <laughs> he's way better than I am, but I'm not going to give up. Anyway, I see the old moose head is back. Where? It's on the back porch. I want to go see it. Why'd you bring it back? Because I couldn't find Lefkowitz's lady friend, that's why. But wasn't that like his final wish or something like that? It was. Wasn't he your friend? He was. And you just gave up? David, don't talk to your grandfather like that. All right. I'm going to go do some homework. Sometimes I feel like this house isn't big enough. Sometimes it seems like it's too big to me. I can't even get close to Chris in this house anymore. Why is the moose head back? Uh, look, why don't you and I turn in, okay? Kiss your grandpa. Good night, baby girl. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bunkin. Come on, I'll read your story. Why did Grandpa bring the moose head back? Hello? Joe. Yeah, Gus. Round up the posse. Who's head again? We're going to ride in the morning. Just flip it out a little whiz, okay? Watch me. Hey, that's pretty neat. Where'd you take lessons? You don't think lessons to fish? My grandpa showed me. Go and try it. It's harder than it looks. Let me take another shot at it. Why? Lines in the water. That's all that matters. The rest will come to practice. Well, how long till we catch something? Shh, beats me. Just don't expect to catch a fish right away. How come? Well, I don't know. They're down there, aren't they? Well, yeah, they're down there, but that doesn't mean they're biting. And they may not like our bait or something. Well, what's the matter with it? I didn't say that there's Oh, any... should we change it? Oh, Willie, slow down. This is some tennis. But don't I have to do something? Yeah. You have to wait. Grandpa says fishing is patience, luck, patience, skill, and patience. You know, you talk about your grandpa a lot. Well, he's a pretty cool guy most of the time. I got beat in the tournament yesterday. It's too bad. What did your dad say? Nothing. Not one word. He just left after match point. I hate tennis.
I'm just glad that we're going the extra mile. We're leaving no stone unturned, climbing a mountain. Got it. Got it, Joe. What made you change your mind? I couldn't outstare the moose. You think Lefkowitz appreciates what we're doing? Well, unless being dead makes you smarter, I doubt it. Hello. Hello. Say, I wonder if... Say, we were wondering if you could tell us anything about the people who used to live in the house next door. When there was a house next door. I'm right in the middle of my workout. Is this important? Could be. Yes, it could be. What is that in the back of your car? Oh, that's a moose's head. Now, honey, about the people Wait, who why, live next... Why are you carrying a moose around in the back of your car? Because it won't fit in the trunk. Makes sense. Hmm. One thing for sure. Next time we see Lefkowitz, we'll have a whole lot to talk about. Maybe I should be taking notes. Here you go. When the lady next door moved out, she gave me that and said to keep any mail if there was any. There never was, though. And Sonia Realty. Hmm. Yes, those are the people that handled the sale of her home. I uh, say, so you say the lady that lived next door. Now, uh, honey, how old would this lady have been? Well, she was about late 50s, early 60s, I'd say. It's hard to tell when they get really old like that. Uh-huh. Well... You go ahead and uh, enjoy your workout. Okay. We certainly have. Bye. Gus. <laughs> what? I went fishing. I guess you didn't need to practice yesterday after blowing that match, so you went fishing. Well, did you catch anything? Come uh on. -huh. Look at this. It's a beauty. This is it? After all the money we've spent on lessons, the hours driving you to the best coaches, the time waiting while you practice, this must be some fish. Well, tennis costs so much money. Why don't we just forget it? No, we won't forget it. It's not the money I mind. What I mind is you blowing a fantastic opportunity. You have the potential to be a great tennis player, William, one of the best. And you're messing it all up just so you can do something stupid like fishing. I just don't understand it. A hundred and fifty boxes of cookies sure is a lot of cookies, isn't it? Tell me. What am I gonna do? Are you asking me to help? I guess. Do you mind? I was hoping I could, but I was afraid to ask. Why would you be afraid? I thought you might mind. Me? But we're friends. All right. First, we have to get organized. There is no way we can sell this many cookies by ourselves. Gus, I know these people. Whatever you do, don't give me a name and address. Don't give my name? Right. They say, uh... It's a seller's market, low interest rates, uh, capitalize on your equity now and move up, and they get your head spinning around with all these astronomical figures, and the first thing you know, there's a for sale sign in front of what used to be called Home Sweet Home. My brother-in-law sold his five-bedroom house with a pool in just two weeks. Now he's living in a, in a trailer park. Fellas, we're not here to sell a house. We're here to find out about Lila Delacourt, yeah, okay? We don't want them to know that, because if they find that out, they will think that we are trying to take away one of their clients, and they'll clam up. I know how Mike Hammer handles this. Trust me. All right? Mike Hammer. This will be good. Hello, I'm Mrs. Frost. How may I help you today? Hello, sweetheart. Excuse me? We need a little information, you know what I mean? Joe! Joe, will you stop? No, uh, no names. I'll handle this. Hello, I'm Gus Witherspoon. How do you do? I wonder if you could help us. We're trying to find the whereabouts of a Miss Lila Delacourt. Yes, of course. We have several of her listing. She's constantly turning over property. What with it be a seller's market and low interest rates? Here it comes, what I tell you? 
Do you think you could give us her address? We're trying to pass on a message from an old friend. I guess so. She often asks us to take messages. She's in and out of town so much. But I'll have to telephone ahead and make sure it's all right. If you would, please. My pleasure. Like hammer. And Bertha's uncle said he'll take 25 boxes off our hands to give his business gifts. And when Grandpa gets home tonight, I'm going to ask him if his vanilla club will take a couple boxes to use at their meetings. That'll be an easy sale. This guy will eat any good. Yeah, and maybe you can sell some to your friends for me. Molly, my friends have better taste than that. Besides, why should I? I'll promise not to hang around you and your friends when we go to the movies. We can probably work something out. And, Mom, do you think you could sell some of the newspaper for me? Mm-hmm. If you can, I'll probably be able to get rid of most of my cookies. You two stay here, put away all these groceries. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is one time I'm not going to mind putting away the groceries. Chris? Hi, Mom. What's wrong? For starters, you're late. And I couldn't be helped. We were coming out of Badger's and Jennifer's car wouldn't start. And it took the auto club an hour to get there. What were you doing at Badger's? Picking up Jennifer's dress. It took two of you to pick up a dress? No. But Jennifer wants some company. And I had nothing else better to do. Oh, Mom, I forgot. I was supposed to meet you at the mall at two. Look, I'm really sorry. That's not good enough, Chris. I should have called, huh? What would you have said if you'd called, Chris? I'm so sorry, Mom. A friend of mine called. I got a better offer. Forget it. That call doesn't work for me. We had plans and you should have been there, period. Mom, what do you want me to do? I said I was sorry. There's nothing you can do now. You did it. It's too late. We had plans and you never showed up. That isn't nice. It just isn't nice. We're forgetting something. Gus, you cannot gift wrap this thing. The ant whistle is still closed. I'm talking about that. Mrs. Delacorte is a married woman now. If we bring this thing around here, we could be getting in a serious jam. You don't think that someone could actually get jealous over a moose? Summer nights in Montana? You bet I do. We've come too far to turn back now, Gus. It's Lou is counting on us. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Delacourt? Oh, dear. Uh, is your husband in? Oh, I'm sorry. He passed away several years ago. Oh, good. Uh, Joe. 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 Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. Uh, my name is Gus Witherspoon. Oh, from the realty office. Yes. Uh, I tell you, Lou Lefkowitz asked us to bring this moose by for you. Who? Lou. You remember you and he and a moose in a meadow in Montana? What? Lou Lefkowitz. You, you know, Lou, didn't you spend the summer of 1937 in some green meadows somewhere in Montana? Well, that was a long time ago, but uh, I think I did. And you had a, you had a romance with Lou Lefkowitz. Oh, that summer. <sighs> Well, I had several romances, but never with a Lou Lefkowitz. Hey, Willie. Hey. Pretty explosive stuff out there yesterday, huh? My dad has a temper. You okay? Sure. He's blown up at me before. Usually when I don't win a match or I make a stupid shot. Where'd you get the new racket? This is nice. I stole it. What? And it's gonna get me tossed out of this club. Willie, are you bonkers? Wait, you play tennis. Nowhere's fine with me. I hate tennis, David. But Willie, you're good. And you liked tennis or you wouldn't have offered to give me the lesson. It was different. I, I was having fun. Well, this is stupid. Hey, give me that. 
I'm not going to let you ruin your tennis, okay? It's none of your business. Come on, give me it back. Give me a racket. Come on. Stop it. Break it up. This is Miller's racket. He's been looking for it all day. You stole it, didn't you? Sure was some red-hot romance Lou had. Yeah, a real scorcher. She don't even remember him. Yeah, it makes me wonder. Wonder of what? If Sarah Gorman would remember me. She was a beautiful dame, and she reminded me of the angels, you know, that you see in the religious pictures in museums, but she didn't act like an angel, if you catch my drift. Oh, if you can tear yourself away from your story there, maybe you'll help us load this thing. Well, how is it with Lefkowitz's memories, you have a lot of respect, but with me, you have no patience? He's dead. Good. Good. Well, maybe someday I'll be dead, and then you want to hear about Sarah Gorman and my memories. No. Okay, fine. I have no intention of sharing the experience with you. Now, what are we going to do with this thing? You don't suppose some zoo would want it? Nah, they like live ones. How about selling it? Who would want to buy it? Too homely. I know it's homely, but it's loose moose, and it would be like throwing his ashes in the trash. He was Jewish. I know he's Jewish. Well, most of us do not approve of cremation. Most of us, anyway. What's that got to do with anything? Because you said that it was like throwing his ashes Start away. And yeah, I am on. saying on, that there bro. wouldn't yes, be yes, any yes, ashes. Let's because go! Because he would go. not have been cremated Come because on, right on. Out of here. it was Jewish. Dad, David didn't steal the racket. I did. Why? Because. Well, Grandpa always says you have to do what you believe. I think you have to tell your dad what you really want. What is that song? I stole the racket so I'd get kicked out of the club. I don't want to play tennis anymore, Dad. But you love tennis. I did, but not anymore. It's not any fun anymore. I, when I don't do well in practice, you get mad at me. If I don't win, you get mad at me. No, I don't. Not really. Well, maybe I do sometimes, but I don't mean it. I just want you to be the best. I try to be, Dad, to make you happy. You could be the best. No, I couldn't. Not if I don't like tennis. I just want to do things that are fun, like skateboarding and fishing. Stuff like that. At least for a little while. Okay. Maybe it's time to give tennis a rest for a while. Until it's fun again. Thanks, Dad. I owe you an apology, David. You stood by William. <laughs> Willie. Hey, what are friends for if you can't stand by him? Hey, Grandpa. Hi, son. Oh, you brought the moose back. I did. Here, give me a hand, will you? Mm-hmm. You really helped me out today. I did? Yeah. How so? Well, I told Willie something that you said, and I think it really helped. I think his dad's going to be a lot cooler about everything from now on. Good. Anyway, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Sure. Hey, David? Mm-hmm. Who's Willie? He's a friend. Oh. Well, thanks for your help. Uh-huh. Get out of my chair, sir. Be gone. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, honey. Why is the moose back here? It's a long story. What's troubling you? Mom and I had a fight. Oh, you did, huh? Was it a bad one? I don't know. I guess it was pretty bad since I feel so terrible. Well, that's a pretty good indication. You know, one of the problems is that she's at such an impossible age. 
Your mother's at a bad age, huh? Yeah. Did I ever tell you the Mark Twain story? No. Mark Twain said, when I was a lad of 18, I left my father's house convinced he was the dumbest man in the world. I didn't see him again till I was 21, and I was amazed at how much the old man had learned in three short years. Why don't you try just being her friend? You really think that's possible, to be your daughter and a friend? Oh. I think it's possible. It takes a whole lot more patience. But it's worth a try. It's worth a try. Thanks, Grandpa. You bet. Grandpa? What, honey? Don't blame yourself. <laughs> what, for your fight with your mother? No, oh, about the moose. What about the moose? Well, you have no reason to feel bad. We all lose sometimes. We do, do we? You did all you could. You know, I'm not sure about that. I think if I'd have done all I could, we'd be hanging that moose in that lady's house and not ours. Thank you, my dear. Now put all this stuff back up there for me, will you? Okay. Get ready, Bullwinkle. We're traveling. I appreciate your interest, Mr. Witherspoon. I really do. It's more than a matter of interest, ma'am. But my house is simply not the proper setting for such a unique trophy. Oh, it's not about this moose head. Well, then what? It's about a friend. And from what he said about you, ma'am, it's about love. And I, I guess that's the part you didn't understand when we were here before. But I've already told you, it's a long time ago, and I really don't remember. He carried your memory in his heart like some people carry a picture in a locket. You touched his life, ma'am, in a way that very few lives are ever touched. If I'd have done that, if I'd have touched somebody like that, I think I'd want to know about it. Heck, I'd even be glad about it. Anyway, I said what I came to say, and now I'll feel okay about disposing of old Bullwinkle here. Good day to you. Ah, goodness. Can I come in? Sure, Kamani and I can use some help before these things take over the entire room. Mom, I don't think I like having you being mad at me. I don't think I like being mad at you, Chris. Right. So can we figure out a way where you're not mad at me? That's great. What did you have in mind? Well, I figured that I'm going to have to plan my time more carefully. So when I say I'm going to do something with you, I'm going to have to do it. Real good idea, miss. Mom, I also think that you have to realize that I'm growing up. Sometimes my plans are going to change at the last minute. You think that you can call me when they do change at the last minute? <laughs> yes. It's just that with all I'm doing at school and my friends and studying... And dating and being on the phone for hours on end, you know, you hardly have time to sleep. Well, yeah. How did you know? Because I was you. I mean, I was your age. I know how that feels. I also know that sometimes it's more fun to be with your best friend than your mom. That's part of growing up. That's normal. I appreciate that. Here's something you may not know. I like you. I like who you grew up to be. I like how you turned out. I enjoy spending time with you. I look forward to things like shopping for a spring dress for you. Having lunch at the tea garden. And just having a heart-to-heart -heart chat. We haven't done that for a while. I kind of miss it. And I'd like to do it again. We'll do it sometime, Mom. Good. Any idea when you might have some time for it? This is mine. 
and I'll get back to you on that. Hello? Yeah, hi. Good no, I didn't see him all day. Why? Oh, are you serious? For real? Well, did she actually see them together? Or is this like her gossiping again? Because she's the biggest gossip. Well, no, but I mean, I can't freeze him out just because of something she said. Mr. Witherspoon? Mr. Witherspoon? Yes, ma'am. I wonder if I could impose upon you. How's that, ma'am? Well, I wonder if you would be kind enough to help me hang my moose head. What you said made me realize your friend Lou was someone I would have liked and might have loved. Will you help? Sure. Why not? This is the trouble right here. Wouldn't it be easier to just throw whatever's broken away and buy a new one? Well, it might be. But see, I don't do that. My father taught me never to own anything I couldn't fix. You mean you can fix everything in the house? Put an air button. Put an air. And if I can't fix it, I'll fiddle with it till I can. Would you teach me how to do all those things? Sure, if you just watch me, you'll learn. How'd you and your pal Bob and come out on the cookie sale? Great. We finally got rid of the whole lot of them. You did. Well, you see, if you try, you can move mountains, can't you? Well, I don't know about mountains, but we sure sold a lot of cookies. Hand me them flyers, will you? You know, I've been thinking about ordering some more. I mean, if it's so easy to sell that many cookies. And again, maybe not. 